I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, I have the pleasure of speaking with author Carolyn Neal, the talented woman behind the captivating book of poetry called Whimsical Thoughts. We will delve into a myriad of subjects with her. Carolyn's work transports readers from deep introspective reflections to enchanting realms of fantasy and surrealism. We're going to talk to her about her inspirations that are behind her vivid poetic landscapes. Carolyn, we're delighted to have you on here today on Spotlight. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put you in the spotlight today and ask viewers at home to support writers like you by subscribing to our channel. Thanks so much for being our guest. Thank you for having me. I love your book, Whimsical Thoughts. Tell the folks at home what it's all about. Well, my book is, sorry about that. My cat is in the way. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> He's into my reading too. Exactly. Um, my book is mainly thought. about a wide variety of subjects. It it spans from psycho deep psychological subjects to off the wall fantasy subjects that I found very interesting to write about. I, I to to be honest, I just wrote them on a whim. <laughs> Great. Well, that's why they're whimsical thoughts. Is there one exactly. or two that are your favorites? One of my favorites is called Entitled An Angel's Prayer. Mm -hmm. I wrote that on the eve of my brother's suicide. Oh. And that, that poem is near and dear to my heart. Right. Absolutely. Because of it. Absolutely. Um, that, that it, it, it pulls on my heartstrings because I wrote it just shortly after he died. My mom and my grandparents wanted a eulogy for him. And they didn't ask me to write anything for him, but I did. And it they never got a chance to read it. And which is, I had a heart, it's heartbreaking to me, but at least now the whole world gets to read about it. Yeah. And, and they get to know the actual thoughts of what a, a angel in heaven would feel like if she saw a soul or he saw a soul that lost themselves through suicide. Yeah. Well, that's a beautiful tribute to your brother, no doubt. And Thank you. Uh, a comfort to all of his loved ones as well. And like you said, now you're sharing it with the world. That's the wonderful thing about publishing something. Once it's out there, it's out there and it's out there. Forever. Yes. You know, it's in a book. Uh, you know, it can survive past the internet, perhaps it can survive past, you know, whatever the books will be here to stay, which is wonderful. And, yes. Uh, I, go ahead. I'm I've sorry. been, I love the great poets and I'm hoping one day that I will be measured up to them. <laughs> Absolutely. There's something so personal about writing poetry. It's almost like singing. You know, it's like really yes. putting yourself out there in some ways, don't you think? Yes, it is. It's like you're offering a piece of yourself for, to the muse and the muse either accepts you or doesn't. <laughs> and the only way I can describe it is it's it's just a part of you. It's who you are. Mm. And um, the poetry is just is like a snippet of who you are. And it also shows others the way you you think, and also the way you interpret the world around you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, did you write Classy. this in uh, like uh, as a book or did you compile a bunch of different writings that you I had written? I compiled all my, to be honest with you, I compiled all my poems together into one book. Um, I, write, I wrote each poem separately. Um, one of my uh, first poems that I distinctly remember writing about was uh, a poem entitled God's Love. The irony behind this was it was an eighth grade school assignment. Mm. I was passing poems between my best friend Amy and I. We were back and she was reading my poems and telling me what she thought of them. And my eighth grade teacher thought we were writing love notes. <laughs> to his surprise, he had me read it at allowed in class well mm. the joke was on him yeah it was poetry and yeah. you should have seen the jaw drop 
That's great. So he gave us he so he gave the whole class, no thanks to me, <laughs> the assignment of writing poetry. And he made one request that it had to be religious poetry. He didn't care where or from what religion it was. Mm -hmm. He just said that it had to be centered around religion. He kind of broke the school rules a bit by doing that. But he said it was a learning curve for everyone. That's wonderful. So, That's really wonderful. Are many of your poems inspired by religion? Uh, some are, some aren't. Some are, are inspired by fantastical creatures such as unicorns. Yeah. And then some are inspired uh, from dra from dragons. Mm -hmm. um, a recent, I've been writing on another poetry book and I wrote a poem about a griffin. Um, and then I've also wrote poems about tigers. Um, and there's a poem about a tiger in that book. And it, the funny thing is, is that I was uh, a member of a, po I'm a member of a amino site called uh, Poetry. And, and then there's another one called Poetry and Thoughts. And one of those two, I am a member of what is called Tiger House. Mm. And I kind of wrote that poem because I was in that house I wanted to make an ode to a tiger. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Describing a tiger. <laughs> yeah. So your poetry writing began in eighth grade. Is that when it all began when you were passing those notes along? Yes. That yeah. was my, the beginning of my writing journey started in third grade, but my poetry journey started in eighth grade. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Are you working on anything else right now? Uh, I'm working on my second book of poetry, and then I'm also delving into a fantasy book right now. Okay, great. Well, let's talk about your uh, second book of poetry. Is that just another collection? And I shouldn't say just. It's going to be it another, another collection poetry. of, definitely, it's going to be another collection of poetry. Mm -hmm. And I also have a little bit of a surprise in there. I'm not going to leak it out. Okay. I'm going to let the readers find out about it because I took the time to do some research in this one and I kind of just like plopped a little Easter egg in there, if you will. Nice. And, um, and I also wrote one, po I wrote a poem um, about adoption from a dog's point of view in this, in this book. Great. That's very nice. It's, well, I think it'll touch a lot of hearts. A lot of people are rescuing pups these days and adopting dogs, which is great work, which is God's work, no doubt. Nice to yes. help out an animal in need. Tell me a little bit about the fantasy novel that you're working on. Um, my fantasy novel is about a uh, young dark elf that is chooses to leave his people behind. And while, after he cho chooses to leave his people behind, he stumbles upon a dying elf that makes a request of him that he finds the staff of truth. And the Staff of Truth is a very powerful magical item that uh, enhances spellcasters' abilities. And his mother is a spellcaster. She wants the Staff of Truth. Unbeknownst to him, he's now in a race to find the Staff of Truth against his evil mother. Wow. Sounds great. Sounds great. Who are some of your influences? Do you like reading Harry Potter? Do you like reading, you know? Oh, uh, gee, you just are mentioning some influences here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. J.K. Rowling, I liked her books. Mm -hmm. um, my R.A. Salvador, I love his writing. Mm -hmm. One day I would like to be right up there on his niche. Yeah. Um, Sanderson is also a very good author. Jordan is a, uh, Robert Jordan, he's a good author. Um, too bad he passed and had to set, hand the candle over to Sanderson. But Sanderson did a good job of the Wheel of Time series. Um, uh, let's see, greats like uh, Byron, um, Shakespeare, uh, Dickinson, uh, let's see, Edgar Allan Poe, uh, Agatha Christie, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Um, let's see, uh, there is this other... Uh, there's a science fiction author by the name of Hubbard that I like. Um, there's another one called Hubbard. Uh, the um, Honor Harrington series that he wrote is wonderful. I love strong female characters. Great. And, um, I, and then there's another uh, series called Elf Quest that I fell in love with in the sixth grade. And it inspired me to write my own book. Awesome. Awesome. 
Sounds great. Sounds like you're a busy woman with your reading, with your writing, with your creating. And uh, it sounds like a fun life. It is. Yeah, it is. I just love to just love to write. And I just also love to read. Great. To be honest, I, I'm a if it has a front cover and a back cover, it's dangerous to my health. <laughs> I'll read it. <laughs> sounds great. What state are you based in? Huh? I'm what? based in Arizona. Oh, OK. Beautiful Arizona must be perfect this time of year, right? Actually, it's uh, it's OK right now because it's not too hot. It's right. not too cold. Yeah. And it's um, the weather is ideal for hiking or swimming or just walking your dog outside. If it gets I, to this, once it hits May, then it's not so perfect. It then hot. it's like it starts making you sweat in your own drawers so it's <laughs> exactly. like you don't even want to go outside you exactly. just wait until nighttime to go outside when the weather is cooler yeah yeah that's how it is in the desert got to wait for the evening for the sun to go down well you've yes. done a delightful job on writing whimsical thoughts it's highly recommended it's a book of poetry that you can really reflect upon some will perhaps bring tears to your eyes some will actually make you smile and chuckle they're great whimsical thoughts it's the perfect title thank you for a wonderful thank book. you carolyn thank you so much for joining us here today Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford. Thanking you for your time this time. Until next time on Spotlight.